Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video in Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis in which we are going to talk about fire resistance and design of steel structures according to the Eurocode. Now please notice that, now of course you're noticing that there is a structure ready in front of you and if you're wondering how I got this structure, I have already explained how I have drawn this structure while I was explaining something called member types and the video should be on the top right so take a look on that video if you want to know how I draw the structure or draw your own structure. No big deal. And of course, I want to mention that uh, member types as well as fire resistance are little videos I needed to record because I am going to continue next time in the Industria Warehouse Design Series finalizing its entire process. So this is a very important um, issue I needed to take care of before I continue my main Industria Warehouse Design Series. So uh, does Autodesk Robot design for fire? The answer is yes. How? Well, that's the topic of this video. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, so first things first, we're talking about Eurocode. So we need to make sure that we have selected the Eurocode correctly. How do you select codes? Well, we've done this multiple times. You go to Tools, Job Preferences, and you can go to Design Codes and switch your codes. Now, I'm assuming you know how to deal with Job Preferences. If you don't know that, there is a video talking specifically about this. So I have my Eurocode here. And if you don't find it in the drop-down menu, you have to click on this Browse button. Uh, sorry, you have to click here and go to more and then browse your code, add it to the list and then select it. For the loads, I'm assuming the Euro code load combination and those are the two settings I need for this video. Okay, now we want, we, we have our dead load, we have our live load. You might have other loads like wind, snow, whatever, but I'm doing it on the simplest of cases. So I'll go to uh, loads manual com automatic combination and I want it to do everything under the sun. So ULS, SLS, and accidental. If you click on more to understand what is happening, and by the way, if you don't click on more and say okay, as far as I know, it shouldn't work. First of all, there's no combination here. And second of all, if we run the analysis, huh, it does work. That's a surprise. Okay, it worked for me, but if it doesn't work for some reason, you go to loads, manual, uh, if it doesn't work for some reason, uh, you go first of all, I'll delete everything. So if your automatic uh, combination doesn't work for some reason, you go to German, so you go to loads, automatic combination, full, and go to more. And under more, you can select what kind of uh, accidental SLS, ULS, and fire combinations you want. This becomes important. In relations, for the nature of dead, your case is case number one, so you add it. You just click on this to add it. And for the nature of live or live, your case is case number two, because remember, case number one was dead, case two was live, and you add that. So if it doesn't want to calculate the combinations, you have to add in relations. You have to add for the live dead load this, and for the live load this. But why is it important? Because sometimes you have multiple dead cases, and they might be all of them included, or they might be an or relationship, like exclusion. This becomes important later, uh, but not today. You can go to note and take a look just to make sure that those are your active cases and how they are dealt with and what is going to be calculated. Perfect. If you generate now, nothing will happen. Everything happens, right? Okay, you have the cases. Let me run the analysis again. And you have all kinds of cases, including fire, uh, which you can see that you have like the fire case. Okay, and in the fire case, you have dead load and half of live load, I think. So that's kind of uh, what happens. You can see that in the case of fire, at least in the Euro code, you have dead load and half of live load because in the case of fire, you're assuming that people are evacuating so the live, so the live load is smaller. Okay, now how do we design this? Well, uh, to design this, we need to go basically to our steel design. So I go to design, steel member design. Now, I'm gonna open member types now. And those member types are according to the Euro code. I'll add me a new member type here and say my EC code, my EC type, or my ECB. Okay, let me save that. Yes. So I double click here. Now, in the previous video, I talked about most things you see here. There are some new things because in the last video I was talking about the AISC code, but there are some similarities here. For example, you can go to the buckling length here and you can select it to, well, find buckling at points of intersection of other joints, or other elements, sorry, 
And that's what I'm gonna do. Of course, for more information, you should check the other video. What is new in this case is something called fire analysis parameters. So if you click on a fire analysis parameters, you select fire, and now here is where you can start inputting everything required for the fire resistance based on the Euro code. And this is something, I don't, I don't want to go really deep into that, but let's quick, quickly go to this. Like what's your time resistance, 30 minutes, what kind of temperature curve are you using? Are you using standard ISO curve, external fire, hydrocarbon fire, smoldering fire, you can see each of them has a different curve in terms of element temperature and gas temperature. I'll leave the ISO here. Okay, also the steel member protection, if the steel member is protected against fire or not, and the steel expo section exposition. Like if the section is exposed from all sides, if it's being covered like this, if it's being covered like this, and sometimes, like, this is the exposition here. The safety factor for radiation, convection, adaptation factor, those all are in the code. Like, I should read about that. I just, my point here is to show you how to do this in robot, not to explain fire resistance for you. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's how you can do that. So if you click OK now, now fire is being considered in those elements. So if I save this and basically apply this to all my members because I don't care now about grouping, I apply this to all my numbers and close. You can now just, you know, do verification for everything. But wait, is it? If you do a calculation note, full note, you can't see anything about fire. So it seems you're not yet, you're not ready yet. Because yes, we defined our fire in the member definition, but now if you run the verification here, of course you can't code group design, but that's not my point. Okay, so we define our fire here, so you think, okay, everything, all I have to do is basically to verify or code group design and so on. I just verify here. If you click on calculation, you think, oh, everything green, everything is fine, right? And if you click on calculation node, at least if you look here, there is some strange thing happening here, like if you go to full note. Of course, I don't know what I selected here, to be honest. There is no buckling, it seems. Not my point today. My point is, if you look here, you don't see anything of what you're expecting. Why? Because you don't see any fire analysis. Uh, still why? Well, because there is one extra configuration you have to do before a robot starts doing fire. If you click on configuration here, you can see that you have fire analysis here and you can include fire calculations. And how does robot do the fire calculation? or it does the fire calculation based on the stuff you have applied here. Like everything you applied here, those parameters in this window here are what's going to be used in the fire calculations here when you, op when you basically uh, open the fire calculation. Of course, it's based on the Euro code and the verification method depends on what you have here. And uh, if you click OK now, that's when you're really done because now, if you run the member check, you can see some of them are failing. So still it's not clear because now it's doing everything under the sun. It's doing all the uh, calculations, including the ultimate limit state. But if you want to make a fire check, assume that your structure is being designed and done and you want to make a fire check only. How do you do that? Well, you click here. Fire is case number 36. So well, I want case number 36 to be checked, and now I'll calculate. And you can see that some of them do not uh, succeed in fire. You can combine the knowledge of my previous design videos with this one to design for fire. We can do this right now, so we can define us a new group. Of course, here I'm being very, very simple here. S275 as my material for the Euro code. Yes, S275 for the material for the Euro code. And I'll say here my group, and I'll add all the elements here. It doesn't work, right? I need to select them like this. Of course, you should group them in different groups, but that's not my point today. In these sections, I'm gonna select the European sections, all the I sections, everything. So, IPE, for, for example. For example, IPE. Okay, and now I can do a code group design by designing group number one. Did I save it? Let me save it just to make sure. I can code group design now, and I want to design for everything, so all here and all here. Okay, so for the ultimate limit state, I'm gonna use, uh, well, let's take a look, uh, 21, which I think includes 1.2 and 1.3, so 21, and uh, fire, 36, so 21 and 36. 
And for the SLS, I will, of course, you can choose all, basically, but I don't. You can choose for the SLS, for the SLS you can choose 24. There is 27 if you want, but I just, I just want to choose 24, just that. Of course, you can choose different combinations yourself. I'll calculate now, and well, design is done, I guess, and section is okay, perfect. And it includes fire calculations, because you've seen just before that when you add fire calculations, then the resistance changes and the sections become weaker. So yeah, that's how you can do fire design in this robot. Of course, this is according to the Euro code, and I know my video might be short, but that's all I wanted to talk about. If you want, so, so to recap very quickly, how do you do fire design in Eurocode? Step one, you have to make sure that the design code is selected correctly. Eurocode here in the load, design code, and Eurocode here in the loads. Step two is after you finish your load definition, you go to, you go to automatic combinations, and when you select one more, you make sure the fire is selected and the relations are set correctly. You can make sure of this by going to node and checking dead load as being G1 and live load as being Q1, which is going to be used for the fire stuff. When you generate, you get tons of cases. Some of them are rated to fire. So you have a fire case, but that's not enough because you have a fire load, but you need, of course, to have a member that sees fire. So what we did here is we defined a new member type. We enabled fire analysis parameters, and we told him what kind of parameters we want to do in our fire analysis. And then finally, to make sure that it calculates the fire in the configuration, you enable the fire calculations according to the code, and then run the analysis and be happy. And that's everything you should know about fire analysis in Autodesk Robot. So, well, that's everything I wanted to talk about, basically, in this video. Of course, before I finish, I want to give a huge CE-sized shout-out to our dear channel members, whose name are going to be shown on the screen. I would like to thank them from the bottom of my heart for considering the support of this, this channel. With that being said, I also want to say very quickly that I am, after checking out the poll results that I saw from, your, uh, from the polls I've posted, I see that there is agreement that ETAPS is of interest as well as a reinforced concrete structure. So in my next video after the industrial warehouse design series, I will start talking about ETAPS and robots in parallel. And uh, well, of course, the next uh, project in robot is going to be about reinforced concrete design. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about. I hope that you enjoyed the video. And of course, if you have enjoyed the video, then please like, share, comment, and subscribe, especially subscribing, because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we'll catch you in the next video.